Hey everyone, it is tea time with the diva. Grab your tea, grab your coffee, because we're going to get into it. This tea time is dedicated to Matthew Perry. May he rest in peace. He's an actor best known for his role in the sitcom Friends, which aired for many seasons. And those actors on that particular sitcom made tons of money because they kind of stuck together. But that's another story for another day. You know, current day is a found out that his overdose which took his life there were many people responsible they had their hands in the situation those people are discussing despicable and the most shocking part of it two doctors medical doctors that have a license that took an oath to uh, make sure that they do their patients no harm they actually did their patient harm and now those two are being charged one pleaded guilty the other one um pled not guilty so we we will soon see how much time they're going to get the person i'm going to focus on today is his personal live-in assistant I think all of these individuals need to see life behind bars because they took advantage of a vulnerable person, someone they knew that had an addiction and they just didn't care because they wanted to get monetary gain from him and that's what they got. And I hope that it was worth it to them when they find themselves sitting behind bars in a jail cell because they was just nasty, despicable and mean to a human being that needed their help. So this personal assistant, and when you have a personal assistant that lives in with you, um, they're supposed to make sure they're taking good care of you. His personal assistant was the one that was actually shooting him up with the um the uh, substance. I'll call it a substance um, for speaking purposes. The, the assistant was the one that was shooting uh, Matthew Perry up. And he was actually injecting him, I'm going to say, several times throughout the day towards the um, end weeks of his life. And this assistant said he found Matthew Perry unconscious a few times weeks before he actually died. So how evil and mean can you be? And not only that, the assistant, the day that Matthew Perry did die, he already gave him like two doses that day and gave him one more dose and then ran out of ran errands. You would think if you're giving this man a dose, uh, uh, for the third time for the day, and you knew previous weeks that he was found unconscious, you would leave and you're going to run errands? Craziness. But I think all of these individuals involved should definitely do a whole bunch of time behind bars so they can think about their evil ways. Let's go ahead and get into the story. So Matthew Perry's assistant found him unconscious at least two times in the weeks leading up to his death. Let me just pause this. So Matthew Perry's personal, um, former personal assistant, Kenneth, admitted he found the friend's actor unconscious numerous times in the weeks leading up to his death. Kenneth administered the fatal shot of ketamine that killed Perry on October 28th and recently pled guilty to one count of conspiracy to distribute ketamine, causing his unaliving. Now, I'm assuming not, a lot of people, they're afraid of needles. Um, they're taken when they have to, but they can never administer them to themselves. So I'm just wondering if Matthew Perry was one of those, like, he just couldn't do it, bring himself to do it, um, but he, you know, can allow another individual to do it. So on that note, I would think to myself, if it was up to Matthew, maybe he wouldn't have been injecting himself so much. Listen, I'm not trying to put a blame game here, um, but I am saying that. If somebody's going to do something to, to cause their demise, I'm not going to assist them in it. Figure it out yourself, but I'm not going to put my hands into that situation. In his plea agreement obtained by page six, Kenneth revealed he injected Perry with significant quantities of ketamine. I mean, how does this man sleep at night? Totaling around six to eight shots per day in the days before he was, you know, passed away. I'll use that word. And that is the assistant um, looking better there than he does there. It looks horrible in that particular picture. The former assistant said he found Perry unconscious at his residence on at least two occasions in October on the day of Perry's death. Kenneth said he injected the actor around 8.30 a.m. and then again around 12.45 p.m. However, just 40 minutes later, this is how much his body um, needed it at this point. And I'm talking about Matthew Perry. I mean, he got a shot at 8 31 at 12 45, and then 40 minutes later, he wanted more. It's just insane. Perry allegedly asked Kenneth to prepare his jacuzzi and shoot him up 
with a big one, meaning another dose of the disassociated anesthetic. It ended up being the actor's final words, which is so sad. However, just 40 minutes later, Perry allegedly asked um, Kenneth to prepare. Oh, I read that part. And I read that part. Sorry, guys. After administrating um, Perry's third shot of Kennedy for the day, Kenneth left to run a few errands, only to find the actor face down in his jacuzzi hours later. Last week, authorities announced that Kenneth, Eric Fleming, um, Dr. Mark, Dr. Salvador, and Jasmine, known as the Ketamine Queen, were all charged in connection to Perry's death. Although the 17 again actor had been using ketamine to treat his depression legally, he started abusing the drug in September of 2023. So sad. So that's Dr. Salvador. Um, he is almost like the ringleader in this situation, sort of, kind of. Uh, in Greedy, this is the doctor that called Matthew Perry a moron. He texted the other doctor and said, let's see how much this moron is willing to pay for this ketamine. You greedy, greedy and disgusting. And now you're going to end up spending the rest of your life behind bars, hopefully. This is the other doctor, Mark. Um, and the first doctor, Dr. Salvador, pulled him into this game. But you know what? You're a grown man. He pulled you in and you said yes over a dollar bill, okay? Prosecutors call um, Dr. Um, Salvador. Prosecutors came, Dr. Salvador provided the, out, um, the actor with the liquid ketamine and lozenges, um, almost like cough jobs, even um, taught Kevin, um, Kenneth, how to inject it into Perry. <laughs> how sad is that? Um, Dr. Salvador allegedly roped Dr. Mark into the scheme to get more ketamine and profit off of per um, Perry's, Matthew Perry's known addiction struggles. I wonder how much this moron will pay Dr. Salvador allegedly text Dr. Mark. So sad. In total, the fool's rush um, in actor reportedly paid the doctors around $55,000 for the drug. I mean, I could never need money that bad. It just will not be that serious for me. I will go ahead and work a second job, a third job if I could, before I would take advantage of someone just for their money and knowing that they're in a vulnerable position. Matthew also purchased a drug through Femine, and that is this chick right here, and they call her the Ketamine Queen. Now, they didn't... Um, the, um, they didn't tell us all the names of other celebrity or entertainment people who were getting the um, supply from her. So they kind of preserved their names. But as they the cops were doing the investigation, they found that Matthew Perry was not the only person she was supplying with these, you know, um, substances. I'll say that. All of the ketamine administered to Perry on the day he died was provided by Fleming. Fleming pled guilty to one count of conspiracy to distribute ketamine and one count of distribution of ketamine resulting in death on August 8th. It's a shame. Similarly, um, Dr. Mark also agreed to plead guilty to one count of conspiracy to distribute ketamine. He is facing up to 10 years behind bars. Now, Dr. Salvador, for his part, pleaded not guilty to one count of conspiracy to distribute ketamine and seven counts of distribution of ketamine and two counts of altering and falsifying documents or records related to the investigation. Each ketamine-related count could give him 10 years in prison. Additionally, he could serve up to 20 years for each count of raw records falsification. I'm sure he had to falsify records because after a while, I mean, you're, he's a doctor, so legally he can probably order or get certain meds for his practice, so forth and so on. But after a while, I'm sure they was looking like, okay, why is this doctor ordering so much ketamine? That's why Dr. Salvador needed to bring in Dr. Mark so that some of the ketamine orders can go under Dr. Mark and um, Dr. Salvador would not, um, you know, get so much of the heat put on him. Listen, these doctors, they're both disgusting. This is a sad situation. I am glad that um, the police decided to investigate Matthew Perry's death. And I'm glad that they decided that they're going to bring all of those um, that had something to do with it to justice. The sad part is that these people can be off the street, but there's many behind them. And I think they need to do a hard stance and a really big crackdown on investigating even when 
a local person that is not a celebrity um, it, is, it drops dead off of a drug overdose, find that dealer also. Clean up the streets all the way around. Don't just clean them up when it's a celebrity that has gone. Clean them up, period, so that we can just wipe the world clean of these illegal substances being on the street, destroying families, lives, and unalive people. Listen, guys, Chat with me in the comments, and when I get an opportunity, I will chat back. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe. Hit the notification bell so that every time I upload a video, you will be notified. If you are a subscriber, welcome back. Everybody, thanks for watching. Don't forget, hit the like button. Let me know your thoughts on this particular story, and I'll see you in the next video.